So we are here, we're going to discuss YouTube. We're gonna talk about uploading YouTube, having a plan, and sometimes those plans don't work out. And ultimately you have to pivot. Uh, and one of the things that I really love about YouTube is that we have the ability to pivot. I think a lot of creators think that they can't pivot. Well, today we're actually gonna have a really, really in-depth conversation about somebody not only pivoted once, but twice on her main channel. And I'm really excited about that. Now, before we get started, I want to really dive, di dive in and let you know a few things that's happening in the world of YouTube. Um, we actually have a couple things coming up. I'm giving away uh, some, some uh, big giveaways today, some really big giveaways, and it has everything to do with VidSummit. VidSummit's coming up October 3rd through the 5th in Dallas, Texas. Uh, if you haven't been, it's our 10th year, and ultimately on this stream, we're giving away a couple tickets, so you wanna be able to stick around to the end it's really important because uh, ultimately we are going to a bigger venue. We're going to have more people there. It's going to be the biggest vid summit we've ever had and really excited uh, that a few of you are actually going to win tickets. Now, I know some of you who are on this stream already have tickets. And if you uh, win, you can actually bring a plus one. <laughs> That's what we love. I'm really excited about that. So um, one, of the, one of the big things as people are coming on, um, I just love the creator economy. I love what the creator economy, rep, uh, creator economy, whatever it represents. Uh, and I want to share with you just really quickly why I started VidSummit. And the guest that we actually have coming on today, I even met her at VidSummit. Um, and the reason why I started VidSummit, I saw all these creators come and they were hitting the wall with one thing or another, whether they're really super creative, they had an amazing team, they were uploading videos, getting a lot of views, but their monetization strategies weren't very good or they weren't building their brand in a way or their team in a way that would really help them scale. So ultimately I wanted uh, to uh, bring the people behind the camera, in front of the camera together and have uh, really, really interesting conversations with case studies and people willing to share. Uh, but more importantly, I wanted to give a platform for people to actually uh, uh, share because most, most creators, they don't have a platform to share. They might do it on a podcast here or there, but you know, that was 10 years ago and really excited about all the different knowledge that was uh, you know, displayed and, and presented at VidSummit. It's been really impactful for the community. I know a lot of people that have gone there for a couple uh, subscribers, had a couple subscribers and now they're just crushing it. I wanna share with you one example of this girl right here. Uh, Jenny, Jenny's one of the most amazing uh, people on the planet that I've ever met. And uh, what's really cool about it is she put her last dollar in to come to Vid Summit. She goes, I'm gonna invest in myself. I'm gonna literally learn from the best. I'm, I'm literally going to invest everything I have and come to Vid Summit. She was 17 at the time. And Jenny uh, was able to not only learn from the best, uh, but ultimately she actually won one of my mentoring uh, programs. And ultimately she's like at 1.3 million subscribers now and over almost 700 million video views since October. <laughs> since October. Like, like this is crazy, but what's even better is she's actually one of the keynotes at VidSummit. She's gonna share her strategies and tactics, how she's been able to go full-time right from 17 years old and really start crushing it in a very saturated world. Really excited about that. So um, here's the thing. Um, today, we're actually gonna uh, discuss in detail about YouTube, YouTube journeys, and I know a lot of you might feel frustrated and stuck. That's why I uh, come on these live streams is I wanna share with you uh, different strategies and tactics that most people don't share and have conversations with people that can really feel your pain. And um, this, this person I met several years ago, um, really, really excited uh, to have her on today because when I met her, she was stuck in a rut and she was very miserable. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that on the live stream. I don't know if you've ever felt this way on YouTube. And she felt stuck where she couldn't uh, branch out. She was too afraid because the money was there, but the passion wasn't necessarily there. And so you're like, hey, 
ah, do I keep on doing this? Do I hit it over and over and over again? And that's when I met her. And so really excited to have Kimberlea on. How are you doing, Kimberlea? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Well, I'm, I'm excited to have you on this live stream. I think your story is going to help so many different people uh, that are on YouTube. And I know that your journey started, was it 14 years ago on YouTube? Uh, yeah, it was 14 years ago. <laughs> 14 years ago. I think, I think your first, I think your first video was like a, a, a video, like you, I guess you were going to vlog something. I don't, I don't know. What was your first yeah. video about? My first video was I was bored in law school. I moved to a new city and I didn't have many friends and I felt like an outcast. So I just started turning my camera on and going on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my first video. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And so you're actually uh, going to law school. I think this is a perfect context. And then you ended up, you know, getting through law school, you mm -hmm. know, doing your whole thing and you're the lawyer or whatever. And you start uploading videos on what? <laughs> <laughs> so I was in corporate, working in corporate, thinking that that was going to be, you know, my job. And then I just started uploading about anything at first. Like if anything was in my house that I liked, I'd be like, Hey, you know, this is a really cool spoon or whatever. I mean, it was that, it was that lame. Yeah. And then finally I just talked about my phone grip. I was using a pop socket and I thought, you know, moms could benefit from carrying groceries and also their phone. And I did like one video and it just kind of took off. Okay. So when, when that took off, I think you got excited because that was like the most views ever you've ever had. Right. Um, and, and so what, what's the first, uh, inclination that you have as a YouTuber, if something's taking off, I was like, I better do like 25 more of these videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's, let's fast forward. So you actually started to make, uh, exclusive con uh, content about pop sockets. Exactly. Um, okay. I, I don't know how much, I don't, I don't know how much, you know, unique videos you can make on a pop socket. I mean, it's pretty oh, simple, I was, right? I did a pretty good job at it. <laughs> like how many, how many videos did you make? Like, oh, what was gosh. the? Oh gosh, I would, I think at, at least a hundred. A hundred? Yeah. Wow. And, and then two, like you, like, I know that you're super smart. Um, cause like we've talked a lot and you started to, to, to really leverage that. And, um, did you start out as an, you know, doing affiliate program or did you have your own pop sockets? Like explain the mechanics on the business side. I, at first I had nothing. I was like hardly, mo I mean, I was monetized from the beginning because I got grandfathered in like way back in the day. Yeah. So I was making like something, but it wasn't anything significant. And I was doing it at like four o'clock in the morning before my daughter got up and before I went to work. And I wasn't really, you know, it wasn't like a job or anything, but then I did become an affiliate for pop sockets. And at the time they had a really good program that was like one for one. So if they bought something, I got $1. So like getting $1 is a lot. Like they changed that after that, but I was getting a lot. But were you grandfathered in or did they change your, your, um, your they, cut? They changed it because they, they went with a new. Guys. It's like, <laughs> hey, they want, they want this stuff. They're saying, hey, this is a good idea, but that, I hate that. I hate it when, when uh, they promise you one thing and it's like this, the money comes in and they're like, oh, well, let's just change the program. We can make They more were money. growing a lot. And at the beginning, there were people wearing many hats and like I got to know their team really well. And, right. you know, they were new to this. They didn't realize that my videos were going to take off this way. And so many people were going to come and that their whole marketing strategy would change. So I was a part of that, but not until maybe like the first year I was doing it. Um, but I was an affiliate for them for a while. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's get to when we met because um, like, I, I believe we met at VidSummit or we met at some YouTube conference. I don't know, maybe it was VidCon or something. I think we met a couple of times before I attended VidSummit because I know I had a consultation with you. It might have been right after your Vid Summit yeah. that year in like 2018, I think. Yeah, it was at 18. I couldn't. I couldn't remember. It could have been 17. It, it, it feels. It feels like forever. Like, it w I think know. it might have been 17. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, let's talk about it. So I remember the cons consultation really well. Um, I remember our first, uh, you know, really in depth. And you're like, if I have to make another pop socket video, I'm gonna literally bang my head against the wall. I hate it, but I can't leave because the affiliate money's really good. What do I do? Uh, I mean, kind of kind of express where you're at in life at that time because I think this is a really important thing for sure. Uh, well, I was still working for about a year, you know, going to work and editing in my car on my lunch break. And it was pretty stressful because I, I, I really wanted to get out of what I was doing. And I knew I had a passion for YouTube. It's always just been something I love to do. So I was trying to make it work. And I think a lot of people are trying to make it work. 
and you see some success and then you feel like obligated as well because you have an audience that grew up or like know you from that content. So they would continue to, you know, instigate me to do more videos and they would, you know, email me and, and everywhere. They were just like, come on, we want more pop sockets videos. And so, and then my production value was really good and they were entertaining videos, but I was running out of ideas, number one. And number two, I don't think people realize that I had to purchase a lot of items and it was getting to be very expensive. I mean, some of my videos that went viral were like when I purchased like a hundred pop sockets or a thousand pop sockets or something. And that came out of my own pocket. You know, this, these were projects I was doing not with pop sockets, but just on my own. Yeah, I, I think there's, um, you know, passion uh, that we have with things. And, and, and when you have that passion for content, um, it, it, it drives you to do amazing things. But I think the moment that you're chasing the view, and I would say that that's what you're doing at the time, oh, yeah. you're chasing the view and you felt like you were you're shackled. Uh, to the process of your your content creation and you thought well I need to do bigger videos to get more views and if I get more views I make more affiliate money and you know make some more ad revenue and stuff like that and so you kind of felt compromised mm -hmm. um, and how I mean how frustrating was that for you I mean here you have a law degree um, you were working in corporate America because that was kind of your passion. Yeah. You're making videos in your car when you had a, you know, editing whatever in the car. Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm stuck to pop sockets. Um, well, I even remember that, you know, when I first came here, I did not have any money. Like I came here for a job and I was with my one year old and I was a single mom. And it was just like a lot of things piling up on top of each other. And I just remember one time I left, I forgot my lunch because I used to bring my lunch every day because I couldn't afford to go eating in Manhattan Beach, California, because that's yeah. where I worked. And I just, I forgot my lunch and I couldn't eat anything. And I, and I remember saying, okay, this has got to change. Either I have to go back to corporate and forget this YouTube thing, or I need to find out how all the things that I have that I know are good. Cause you would tell me like, you have good things, you know, you just got to figure out what you need to do. Yeah. And I was like, I have to do this, but it still took me like three years. Yeah. Figure it yeah. Out. Well, I just remember, I just remember having the conversations because I just thought you're the pop socket girl. Like I didn't have, <laughs> you know, context of your background and you know, I thought, okay, I, I get it. I get the monetization side. So we're trying to figure out, okay, what to do. And then the moment that you said, oh yeah, I got a, uh, you know, I got a juris doctorate. I'm like, what the, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I like, like, okay, maybe I prejudged you a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do okay. apologize. <laughs> It's so fine. Like, okay, so you have your JD, and here you are making pop socket videos. Not saying that that's bad, but I could tell you weren't passionate about it. And I remember having a conversation with you very specifically on what gets you excited. Um, mm -hmm. You want to talk about that because I think this is a very important moment for a lot of YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Is is really uh, see where their passion lies, um, and kind of the decision making that you had during that time. In the beginning, I remember even in the consultation, you would ask me things about like, you know, what kind of things get you excited and what is your audience like and who do you want to talk to? And I kept thinking, what gets me most excited is when I feel like I'm friends with my audience. Like I feel like, oh, I could have lunch with this person or I, I like the comments they're leaving because I feel like they're the same age as me. And there was a very big disconnect between the content I was making with Pop Sockets and the age group that I was appealing to, there were like 11 year olds watching my videos. And even though I was a mom and everything, I just felt like, oh, I kind of wish I could talk about more in depth and, and like serious topics. And it would kind of just go over their head and not to make it offensive. But I, I just knew that wasn't really my passion. And what my passion always has been is really the storytelling aspect. Like even my Pop Suckets videos kind of told a story, not as not what I do now, but similarly. And so I enjoyed the process of making it and I was passionate about that, but just not the topic. Yeah. And I, I think the big thing too is realizing what your content appeals to, you know, and I think a lot of people feel trapped by that. And, and ultimately I can't tell you how many consultations I've had over the course of my career of people who says, I want to age up, you know, I want to be able to really age up, but they, they, they weren't, they weren't willing to do what it takes to age up because mm -hmm. it's a pretty drastic measure. Um, and let, let's talk about that. Let's say, okay, the moment that you decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and let's discuss that because there was a lot going on in your life at that mm -hmm. time. 
and here you are making a huge decision for your financial uh, freedom, mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big, scary step when you're getting these views and that's it, tied to money too. Okay. So I did pivot, I would say like a couple of times before my big pivot. So should I talk about my big pivot? Absolutely. Uh, let's or, talk about this, the, the experiment because the experiments is something that, okay. you know, I teach a lot. It's like, okay. gotta experiment with this and see if it works, but yeah, go ahead. So after my consultation with you, I remember I re I rewatched and listened to that. I, I even sat with friends and listened to it and I was like, you know, what can we gain out of this? Like how, what am I supposed to be doing? I would write notes and it's just, it's really weird. And if people are wondering how to do this, it's not something you can just put on a piece of paper. It's almost like, it sounds cheesy, but it's like, more spiritual or something inside where you're like, that's it. And you just feel different. But before that, when I wasn't there yet, I would write ideas on paper. Like, uh, I don't know, like, what do I like to do? And I'd be like, Oh, maybe I like to do this. So one of my pivots was into the realm of like, uh, reviews, like beauty reviews. Cause I'm a woman. I, I love makeup. <laughs> I love chit chatting. And so I thought, you know, maybe I'll do this. And I went on a, a rampage of doing like Kylie Jenner makeup uh, reviews and they did really well. I'm not saying that it didn't work, but it just, it was hit or miss. Yeah. And I didn't want a channel that was hit or miss. I wanted an audience that wanted to watch all of my videos, not one video and then not watch the next video. So I knew that wasn't it. And so I, I went into like, like we talked about, I already did the tech stuff, the phone fashion. I even opened up my own business because I thought maybe if I opened up my own business and I'm doing cell phone cases, I can have a different strategy. And then I'm like this, you know, expert in phone cases, which I was, but that didn't work. So I did a bunch of videos on my phone case company that yep. didn't work. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So the, there were a few pivots there. There were a few, and, and some of them did work. I did reaction videos. And I know you weren't really a fan when I first told you, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do some reaction videos. <laughs> I, I, well, okay, so like, it's just like, well, let, let's, let's give it context. It's okay. like, this is like your sixth idea. And I'm like, now you're gonna do reactions? Like, like pick a lane, girl. Like, I know. Like you can't, you can't just go all over it. You're like throwing spaghetti against the wall. It's like, pick I a know. lane. That's, um, that's, that was my reaction to your reaction. Yeah, right? yeah, I remember. Like... <laughs> I'm so upset. I was like, Daryl doesn't like my idea. But, um, <laughs> but just to let you know, in, I think it was like 2019, 2020, I did do the reaction videos. They're all deleted now, but yeah, yeah, I did yeah. do okay with those videos. I mean, they were doing, I was gaining an audience, but what I realized is I care about people too much and making fun of anyone or even like disparaging them at all was really eating at me at night. And yep. I knew that changing the position again after everyone had gotten to know me as like this reaction channel was really going to upset people, but I could not sleep with, like I couldn't sleep at night with my feelings. So I had so to do literally, it. Literally, literally you had this dilemma because you want to create content. You understand that there's certain things you can do to get views. Um, and, and these, this reaction type stuff literally, literally made you feel kind of hollow and yeah. you're like, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. And I got a lot of emails from people that were on my channel, you know, like people I'd reacted yeah. to. And I just, I have a heart about that. Like when people come to me and are feeling bad, I, I it, it will live with me forever. Like I can't yeah. get over it. So I had to make a huge pivot. Well, I remember that conversation girl. Cause it's like, okay. <laughs> Here we are again. I know. Um, but it's like, uh, one of the things I love about YouTube is you're able to be authentically you, right? And and so many different creators, um, believe it or not, their online persona, their YouTube persona is not usually who they are. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what a travesty. Like, cause I think it's like people should know who we are, right? And I think that's the appeal of being authentic and true. And I know, you know, the more I got to know you, I'm like, hey, you know, this is like amazing. And, you know, you're so talented. You're so good with people. You're so kind, you know, and, and yet it, it didn't make you feel mm -hmm. wholesome or, you know, up, uplifting. And so, yeah. you know, you had to, to reevaluate. And I think this is the, probably the biggest aha moment for you was yeah. this is your, literally your sixth or seventh variation of the type of content you were able to succeed in a couple of those, but it just didn't feel right. It just didn't click with you, right? You didn't get excited to wake up and say, oh, I'm gonna make a reaction video, right? right. I, like, I, I enjoyed but, it at first, I will say that, because there's so much content online to react to. And if you do things the right way, yes, you can get a lot of views, but I was chasing the views all the time and it was making me a bad person. Like I was doing it for the wrong reasons and I, I just, I didn't know where to go from there. I was like, what am I gonna do? But I learned from that. And the things that I did learn 
I was able to take the good parts of that. Like I did a lot of research for my reaction videos because I had to like compel people to see my side. And I'm like, wow, I'm using some of my legal like background. I'm using research techniques. And I started realizing where I really wanted to go. And that's where I am now. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. So um, when when did it hit you to say, OK, I'm really passionate about law. Um, what can I what what can I do here? I was um, working out on the treadmill during like 2020 and I was so bored <laughs> and I was also like trying to do the world, yeah. like the world is bored at the same time. <laughs> I was also, I know, trying to figure myself out. And again, I had one of these devastating moments where I'm like, I'm going to be 40. And I know to some people, I don't know how they feel. Maybe they're only turning 30 or maybe they're 25, but it's like when I thought about the number 40, I was like, you know, I wasn't 40 yet. I was like 39 or something, but I was like, I'm going to be turning 40. I was like 38. And I said, this is like bad. I don't have a career. I, I, I threw away my other career. I can't get that back. Cause I tried, I tried going back to my old job and everything. It was right. like applying for jobs and doing interviews. And I was like, I need to dig deep. And I wrote down every single thing that like made me excited. And I, I consulted with a lot of my friends who know me so well. And they're like, you know, one thing you always talk about and you can never stop talking about it and you get so animated, true crime. And I was like, oh, but that's not something you do on YouTube. I was like, that's something you just like watch, you know, you don't do it on YouTube. And then I realized people were doing it on YouTube and I got a lot of inspiration. Well, let, let's let's talk about that because I think that right there um, is, is a very pivotal moment. I know it was for you and it changed the trajectory where you're at today. Um, and uh, you're a totally different person now. I mean, I think that you're just passionate about this and you're, you wake up and you have these great ideas. Exactly. But, but you had the inspirational thought and this inspirational thought was, oh, this is what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And then like, I wanna get very specific of who you're trusting because at the end of the day, when I have ideas, if I share it with people that aren't necessarily, they're not looking at my best, um, you know, for my best welfare, yeah. they'll just be, oh yeah, this is a great idea. And then I'm gonna do something dumb instead of getting honest feedback. Um, who did you approach with this? Like, I, I, cause this, this idea is really important. Cause I think it was like, okay, you had a life crisis. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, where am I at? Where am I going? And, and you, you had this idea, this epiphany, and then you go to share it with someone who, who was the people? Well, at first I kept it to myself and I did, um, like start doing a, um, a podcast with my best friend, Courtney. So we were doing like a true crime podcast for fun, just her and I, but we weren't telling anyone we we're just doing it. Not that I thought I was going to do it on YouTube. And then as I started realizing people were coming on and watching us and listening to us, it was on an app that we were on. I was like, you know what, this could be a good idea. And who I shared it with were the people that number one, I have another really good friend, Laura. She's also taking your course with, uh, she was there with me and I, she does like That's vintage great. fashion. I shared it with her because she's a YouTuber and she understands yeah. this whole process. And I just shared it with people who I knew had my best interest in, in mind and not just like anyone. Like I wouldn't share it with my mom or something, even though I love her, but she might just, you know, just, I don't know, like just not understand where I wanted to go with it. So number one, it was people I trust, but number two, people who were already doing this. And by the way, I was in your 30 day challenge when I pivoted. That's so right. don't forget that. Right. So I was That's in right. there with people. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I want I want to I want to talk about it. So you had these conversations and then when when did you discover this is actually a pretty amazing niche? I know that you talked about the, the podcast, you're getting some followers, but on YouTube, when you did some recon and research, you know, when did it hit you like, oh my gosh, I could do this? Well, okay, so I had always um watched true crime, but not on YouTube. Like I was more of a girl that would go on like Oxygen Network or you know, watch right. cable TV. But Bailey Sarian has always been somebody that I've known, of course, like we all, I don't know her personally, but I've known about her content, but I always saw her content as more makeup related and not really understood that it was like storytelling. I, and I don't know how she does it still, because I cannot do two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like very intrigued with her content and how big she had gotten. And, but there was something different about her that was almost like an anomaly. So I didn't trust that if I did that, that would be my trajectory. I didn't trust it. I was like, you know what? It's an anomaly. She's been promoted everywhere. This is not real life. This is someone who got lucky. But then I started seeing a couple other channels that were smaller and it would be what you would call like a breakout channel. Um, somebody that you know was smaller, but they were getting really good amount of views. And that was Sherilyn Dale. 
and a few other people, but specifically her, because she looks like me a little bit. So I was like, wow, it's like I'm looking at a sister. This is like somebody who's doing this, who yeah. just started their channel, like, uh, not their channel, but their pivot in like 2021 ish. So I was like, maybe I can do this. Like, maybe this is a real thing. No, I love that. I love that. And I think, um, too, you're, you're like passionate and um, it's something that you consumed. And so you you understood uh, the language, the jargon. Um, and I, I remember seeing, um, th I, I, I don't know if you shared it with me or I stumbled upon, I can't remember, but I remember seeing it. And I'm like, this is an hour and 20 freaking minutes. Like, like <laughs> what, what's going on? And I, I, I clicked on it. <laughs> And, and I watched it and I'm like, this is actually good. And I watched the whole thing. And then the okay. other one was like two hours and 31 minutes. I'm like, okay, what, what the heck girl? Like, can't you get yeah. it done in 20 minutes? But, no. but, but I, I went to it and I remember, you know, us having a conversation after that and um, it, it was really good. It, it felt right, but the views weren't there. Right. Um, the views were not there. <laughs> Right, and I think this is a very important step. Was here you 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 started to to pivot again mm -hmm. for the seventh freaking time, <laughs> and, and and you're making contents, but the views are not there. No, um, what was going through your head? Because I think this right here, I think a lot of YouTubers can can really relate <laughs> to for sure. What was going through my head? Delete. That's what I I privated <laughs> the videos immediately when they weren't doing yeah. well. I was like, oh, this isn't happening for me, but. I was like I told you before, I was in the uh, 30 day challenge. And yeah. so I was learning. I'd always cared about my title, my thumbnail. I, I'd always cared about it, but I hadn't really given it too much thought. Like I would just throw it up at the last minute or not really give a rhyme or reason. Um, that that so, hurts my soul every time that <laughs> people say that. Oh, sorry. Just last minute. I'm like, oh. But then oh. Okay, go ahead. I want to tell you what I really did. This is the truth. Um, I started to listen to the audience because I used to be really. A defensive if somebody would say yep, yep. this is distracting why do you do this why do you do that and i was coming out of a very emotional time in my life so i was even wearing a shirt with the f word on it one day in, in a video just i don't you know this is me back then and i was like somebody was like that's so distracting and offensive and i was like yeah it kind of is like even if it's something that i want to wear what about my audience because they're the ones consuming and so i started to write down a lot of the things and obviously don't change yourself but right. when you realize that some of these things are distracting from how good you could be, those are the things that I wanted to change. So I, I privated my videos and then I worked on like making a set, like somewhere to sit, somewhere to yep. be, everything was being better. Like my audio, my video, my camera, stuff like that. So. Yeah. And I, I remember that. And it was like, okay, you had a really good plan. One thing that I, um, I'm obsessed with, as you what, what are well aware, it's, it's about the viewer, right? It's like mm -hmm. literally understanding the viewer, um, and, and trying to anticipate, uh, what would really pull them into your content. And I think the big thing is that's, that's the whole thing. And I think a lot of creators, they make a big mistake of saying, Oh, I make videos for myself. Well, that's fine. <laughs> then don't, don't expect more than one view. Cause like at the end of the day, if you're just only making videos for yourself, don't expect more, more than one view. Yeah. However, if you are there to inspire, educate, and entertain, and you want it to go out to people, you have to be a little bit more sensitive of how they would react to this not not right. reaction content but it's like if i did this or you know wearing this shirt does how is that going to pull them in deeper into right. the content or is it going to distract and you went all in you literally mm -hmm. said okay i'm privating the videos i learned from it let's do it right mm -hmm. uh you you elevated your your production quality which is really mm -hmm. important because true crime is always about the sound because like for podcasts and stuff like yep. that and then two you know getting getting the right atmosphere where yes. it is interesting and and then two um that you're hyper focused on uh really looking at what what is the value proposition um right. and i know that um when you launch this this is a really important thing for everybody uh, to hear is you've you've done several seven uh seven different types of channel channel types on the same channel same channel and and <laughs> you're getting ready to do your eighth one or the seventh one whatever it is and and you're like okay the audience is there um and oh the audience was then it wasn't there because yeah, i yeah. lost like ten thousand yeah, yeah. followers. <laughs> yeah it's like the audience will be there yeah uh, but but the question was do i do it on a new channel or do it on the old channel. And we had this conversation and I just wanted to let everyone know 
is um, you made a choice to do it on the main channel. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you're going to do it on your main channel, you gotta expect a period of time mm -hmm. that YouTube needs to figure out who your audience is. I remember currently. this, yep. And, and one of the things that a lot of people really care about is subscribers. And I told you, I don't care about subscribers. No. I care about active viewers. And it takes a little while for you to have active viewer numbers, especially when you have um, all these video views coming on something else. And then when you mm -hmm. do something the complete opposite, they're like, oh, what is this? All right, cringe, you know, whatever. Yep. You know, it, it, it takes a little mm -hmm. while for it to do that. And you actually had to make a hard decision at that time because you had videos that were bringing in views. Mm -hmm. And and here you had a video that you're passionate about that wasn't bringing in the views that some of those other ones. Um, and it was like, okay, how do we get enough active viewers coming in? And for me, it's like you either prune them, you, you delete them, make them private, whatever, mm -hmm. or you get enough volume of views coming in on this other, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, vein or niche. Yeah that that you would actually start getting momentum and it take you know maybe s sometimes six months or maybe even more i think um, it did yeah you know but you want to just kind of <clears throat> talk about that because i know that a lot of content creators will get frustrated when they don't see it immediately the views even when you started leveling up your production oh i remember i still go back to my old videos because i show other people how i pivoted and my best friend and i we go through and i'm like look I was getting a hundred views in the beginning, a hundred. And I was like, but it was still a hundred people. So I said, that was good, but you know, you can't sustain a channel just by getting a hundred views. But what I kept reminding myself is I was like, YouTube does not understand what in the heck is going on right now. So I just have to keep going and I just have to, you know, not give up, but it did take about six months. And then I saw a little bit of traction. And what I would see was when one video would get some traction, a lot of the other videos would get traction. So I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're growing, you know, they're not the best videos, but they're growing. Yeah. So I just kept going and that's a really hard place to be in, but you know what you think of it like this, I wasn't doing well enough anyway. So I was like, what am I losing by doing something I love instead yeah. of doing something to try to chase a view? Yeah, I love that. And let's, let's kind of digest that because I think this is probably one of the biggest things of this interview here. And you just you just hit it, um, you know, just very very um, perfectly. You had to make a decision to be satisfied with the views that you actually had, um, yeah. and just realized, hey, even if it's a hundred views, can I get a hundred of people to come back, or can I get fifty people to come back? Yeah, that's that active viewership that we're talking about. And and if you can, you know, YouTube's going to see, oh, they like this type of content. And as you do more of it, it's going to surface more. Um, and you know, you 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 made a really really hard um, decision, but it was like, hey, <laughs> I'm not making money this other way. You know, I might as well go all in on this. But you're at a point where like, hey, it's it's either you know we're going to do this or not. But I think the moment that you just said, you know what, I'm 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 done. This is this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm passionate about, and I'm going to make the best video I possibly can. Yeah. That's and also, I, yeah, go ahead. The audience means a lot, meaning, okay, so before when I did Pop Sockets, I would get comments, like we all get comments. But yeah. remember, I said I wanted to be making videos like with a best friend, like as if I'm doing yeah. it for a best friend. I started realizing like the comments were really awesome and i would get in i would get in, into the comments and i'd be like oh my gosh well, yeah you novels let's just be clear there's comments and there's novels your comments are like <laughs> <laughs> thousand because, words because i don't know they, what it is but it's the like audience crazy. is similar to yeah. what i like so they would start to talk about the video and i'd be like yeah you're right maybe the knife was over there like that and then it's it and what happened was we became friends like i yep. i literally tried and i know it's crazy but i still I still, for hours, when my video posts, I still answer every comment. And I, I genuinely know people from my channel. I genuinely know my followers. And they're like friends. And we talk about things and we tell each other like, oh, my dad's in the hospital or this is happening. And that is what I've always wanted. So even if, even if it wasn't there yet, those things satisfied me as a person, like on yeah. a personal level. So I just kept going. Yeah. So I, I love this on so many different levels uh, because I think you found how to put fuel in your tank. You know, like how do you actually get the motivation when you don't necessarily have the views? Mm -hmm. And it was like, hey, I'm going to engage with every comment. I'm gonna those hundred people, we're gonna become friends. Yes. And what I love about it is those hundreds turn to a couple hundred, and those couple hundred turn to thousands. 
you know, and, and it started to grow from there. And I, I remember the moment that your channel, I don't know, maybe was it six, eight months? I can't remember how long it was. Yeah. But it, it just popped off. It was yeah. just like, it was like, okay, YouTube finally had enough data. People were actually clicking on your thumbnail. You'd actually, you were more intentional Yes. on, on your strategy and you started to elevate. And, and this is, I, I think you mentioned this just prior when, when one video pops off, what does the rest of your catalog do it, when it in related to the niche? Yeah. It elevates, they're, right? They're all going up. Yep. Yeah. And so when was that? Like, how did that feel? Um, first off, um, uh, and then, and then two, like, what did you do next? Okay. So I'd always remember on the consultation call, I wrote down all these notes and they were always on this notepad that I had. It was like this red YouTube book that I got from YouTube space. <laughs> it was like Daryl's top things. And, and you had said, if you ever get one video that gets 40,000 views, you better call me. But I never called you when this happened, but in my head, I knew what well, <laughs> I was like, I know what Daryl's going to tell me to do. He's going to be like, you need to analyze this video. You need to figure out why did this do well? And right. I That's knew right. that was the moment I got the 40,000 views. Like one video just shot up and it was the worst video that could have happened because YouTube had required me to censor like everything in the video. So it was all this wow. blurring, blurring everywhere. Like I had to learn a lot of things about YouTube, but that, like, this is the video that ended up getting like 120,000 views and getting me 15,000 subscribers in a month when it started popping off and I was like, oh, it's the worst video. And people are complaining in the comments, like, why is it all blurred? And I'm like, oh my God. Oh. But that's when I really realized like people like what I'm doing and I yeah. want to continue doing it. Yeah. I, I love that. And it's like, okay, now, now you have kind of a plan and, and a passion of, of the type of content you're creating. You're starting to see your hard work is paying off. And um, one thing that a lot of people don't maybe know um, is is the differences between the niches of the channels on YouTube and the associated ad revenue because um, you had pop socket ad revenue and and then you had affiliate and then you right. started to mm -hmm. see this ad revenue because I mean your your videos are like sometimes two hours um, and right. you're able to fire a lot more ads. When did it go like oh this is this is actually going to be good? <laughs> it was. Um... It was July, I think it was July of 2021. I mean, you would know better if you looked at my analytics, right. but there was just this moment where I go, because my goal has always been to make the same amount that I was making in corporate because yep. I have a degree and I did all this work and my dad yep. would kill me. And I was like, I have to have a career. So I was like, oh my gosh. And I just hit the amount I was making before I quit my job. And That's that was so the turning point for me. And, and not to be like, too personal, but I was in an abusive relationship. Like things were happening that were really bad for me and I couldn't get out of it unless I could own myself. Yeah. And that was the turning point for me. No. And, and I, and I love it. And, and I think that the whole thing about it is you found, um, you kind of that original path that you, you went on, uh, you, you have a, a love for, for the law. Um, yeah. you have love to create content. You love to connect with people. So like YouTube's a no brainer, um, mm -hmm. uh, from this aspect, but when, when that passion and, and love comes together and you're able to make money, it's just like a feeling yeah. like no other. It's like, wait, yep. I, I actually get paid to do this. Like I get paid. Exactly. This is so great. And so, um, and, and I know that, you know, having, you know, hard life experiences at that time too. Yeah. You know, sometimes you had a lot of self doubt and, and it led to some mental health challenges, yeah. you know, like we all have. Um, but you know, getting, getting that reinforcement of, Hey, there's a community that loves me. I'm making now what I was making in corporate. Right. Um, this is great. You know, and I, yeah. I get to set my own terms and I, I want to talk about this cause this is another thing. Um, you know, you and I had a conversation on, uh, true cr crimes, you could go a million different directions. Yes. Um, and, and, um, you know, there's the, the hot is what's trending right now. You're basically going after whatever's in the news, you know, yes. <clears throat> and when you told me what your, your guardrails on for your YouTube channel, I gained so much respect for you, girl. Like I, I really did. Um, because <laughs> I remember it, this, yeah. cause it was, it was, it was surprising. Uh, cause like, once again, I think you could cha chase the ever ending view yes. and it's like, Oh, Johnny Depp, let's talk about all the stuff from there and all, you know, go, you know, you're going into right. law review stuff. 
but you had your guardrails on. I think you were probably one of the most focused creators I saw. I said, no, this is the type of content that I want to make. Well, you want right. to uh, focus in on this? Yeah, and I watch a lot of current event true crime channels, so it is something that I consume, and I'm always trying to be apprised of what is going on in, in the industry and what's going on in the law. But at the same time, um, I think people can forget there's a blurry line between, you know, what's on YouTube and that these are real people. These are real killers. These are real people that are out in our community that can do you harm. And I have this platform where people can find who I am from just searching true crime. And the one thing I told myself is I'm not going to be doing unsolved crimes. I'm not going to be getting myself into a position where I'm you know, um, making assumptions about who would do, who did it, or as much as I like consuming it, I knew for my safety, that does not make me feel comfortable. And also I had been told before that, because I went on Reddit and I looked like, what do people hate about true crime creators? Which mm. is a great thing to type in. And I realized that there were a lot of survivors and a lot of people who were advocates for more ethical true crime that didn't like ambulance chasing but it's like death chasing it's like when somebody goes missing when somebody dies you're on that and you're making this money from it and you're doing 10 live streams and people are giving you donations which i don't care what other creators do but for me personally i was like you know what i wouldn't feel right about that because it reminded me a lot of what i was doing before with like the reaction videos yeah yeah and 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 you said this is this is a line i will not cross mm -hmm. and like I found that when creators do that, they set a standard of excellence. And that's what you did. You actually said, this is, I went and, and this didn't make me feel good when I was doing yeah. reactions. Um, I went on Reddit and realized, oh, there's this whole vein of people that are dissatisfied with this type of content or there's yeah. this underlining issue. And you planted your flag. Uh, yeah. This is what I. This is who I am. This is what I am, and I believe that decision right here is the reason why you have the success that you do, because you you literally identified what you are, but more importantly, what you're not. And no, I can't tell you how many creators they they'll just chase that view, they just yeah. chase it, and it's just like no, I'm I'm going to do it this way, and and you know your your uh, your content literally has thrived thriving because of it because you actually created a community of true crime people that love the same way yeah they love the story they love to to know the intrigue of it but they also need to understand um you know um that that it's it's a case close yeah um and and it's not it's not pending whatever um but mm -hmm. i do want to say um the way that you do it was probably one of the smartest things i've ever seen on youtube Oh, I'll, I'll, nice. I'll actually say like, that. I'll, I'll say like, it out okay. loud. Okay. I'll say it out loud. And it's not the only reason why I'm having you speak at Vid Summit. Like, if you guys don't know, she's speaking at Vid Summit, but I think she can help so many different people. But when you said this, if there's, like, I'm going to preface this. Okay. Um, you says, I'm not going to cross the unsolved, but I'm going to look for what's currently happening in the world right now and see if there's an older solved true crime. Right. Um, do you want to talk about, cause I think that was like one of the most brilliant things. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're still relevant. There's still being talked about it. You're actually elevating, um, you know, awareness. Got um, it. I know what you're talking about now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had to wait for a second. Okay. So what was happening in the current events realm was the Idaho murders were just happening in November of, I think, 2022. And I am deeply uh, concerned and like caring about this murder. And it is something that's unsolved right now. You know, they have somebody that is being prosecuted for the crime, but it is a, I, I call it unsolved. You know, the person has not been, uh, a jury has not said they were guilty yet. So it, it happened in Idaho, Moscow, Idaho. So I started looking to see if there were any other murders that happened in Moscow, Idaho. And I found, I think it was like one or two cases. So I ended up using those keywords. Um, one was a university um, murder as well, but it wasn't in Moscow, but I kind of like used the same subject matter because people were very interested in university killings. And there has been, that's, that was already a topic on my channel already. Right. Like I already had that topic, but then I just started calling it something else that was more in line with what people were searching for with the Idaho case. And so I wasn't, I felt like we could still have a really good discussion about that case in the comments, about that case without talking about that case. See, that that's when I go, okay, you're one of the most brilliant people ever because like here you are, you're not talking about it 
but you're talking about it in the comments <laughs> based yes. off of your, your, your videos. We your were. Video. I was just like, okay, this is brilliant. So like, I want everyone to keep this in context. Uh, right now, the internet went by storms about the Titanic. Like I got so many freaking oh videos goodness. about the Titanic. I was watching ever. videos about it. I was like, like, oh, it, I love it, the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, here, it, it went through this whole thing, but it was like, uh, what I what I love about what you did is you're like, hey, this is relevant. I'm going to go deeper. There has to be something around that area or even right. in, just in Idaho in general. And you found two specific cases that was end up being uh, videos that you're able to do. So mm. you're able to, to kind of explain it, but also have conversations without compromising um, My your, belief system. your beliefs yeah. and, and the yeah. things that you're doing. But you're able to have those discussions in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I love. It's about the community. I mean, that, that is like one of the smartest plays, um, yes. seriously, um, that you could do without compromising. Yeah. And, and I love that. I love it so much. And so, um, let's, let's kind of, um, go through a couple things. Um, and, and you've learned a lot. Um, mm -hmm. like you've been on YouTube for 14 years. You, you literally did, you know, seven pivots <laughs> Um, let's kind of talk about what is important to you now as a creator. And when, when you're doing that, I'm going to pull up your channel here. I yeah. think this is uh this is like really important to see, but here's, yeah. here's your channel. Let me see if we can go here. That's probably better. What's important to me now as a creator and yeah. spe specifically what content I'm doing. Yeah. I, I have gotten so many messages. I even went on a, a zoom call for two and a half hours with the survivor, um, of one of these crimes. Actually, I've done it a couple times and it is very emotional for me. So it's not something that I want to do. I, I would love it, but I already did the psychology thing a long time ago and it's, I'm not made for it. I love psychology, but I can't take in that, you know, that emotional part. But from hearing survivors talk about their parents being murdered or them almost being murdered, I had a different viewpoint of how I want to research content, where I want to get my research from, and what I want to talk about and how I want to talk about it. So for me, I am victim centric. Like I am, I am telling a victim story. So I don't, I don't really talk too much about who did it. I mean, obviously at the end, we know who went to trial, how everything turned out, but you know, you're not going to see, and I, I know I've probably done it in the past because this was different, but I, I don't think you would see like the killer's face on my thumbnail. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm here to tell someone's story they didn't get a chance to be here anymore. So I want to do as much research about everything from like their favorite color to where they went to school, who they were as a person. And it would be even better if some of their family members gave me that information. And a few of them I have had family members give me some information. No, I, I love it. Um, I, I think you, you found your vein, you found your passion. Um, and then two, you've put, you put parameters on the type of content you're going to do. And then two, you realize, you know, even though that I could probably get more views um, in certain ways, especially when you have the, the victim come on and, you know, it's just like, okay. <laughs> There's yeah. like, it, it's, it's overload on you. And it's like keeping yeah. good mental health, I think is a really, really important, especially in this, in this vein of content. Yeah, everyone has their their boundaries. And I know for me, I get too consumed with how other people feel. Just like I told you, like with the other yeah. content I was doing, it haunts me and it, it just, I will keep thinking about their pain. So I, I, I have to do that with my cases too. Once I'm done with it, I have to sort of like tuck it away and say, okay, we are, their memory is going on. We have to move on to the next one or else I will just be, you know, emotional wreck. Yeah. So what's your, what's your process that you go through when you're creating content? Like where, where does the ideas come from? And then how do you, how do you say, okay, this is a good idea that we're actually going to spend some research on. And I want to know how much time do you actually go in researching this? Cause like, like some of these videos are so in depth. A lot. I like, do you got research assistants? Like what, what's going on? No, like, I, I don't have, team. I don't have research assistants. I wish I did. <laughs> I have one person that helps me put together like a skeleton of, of a case so that I can see yeah. like, okay, well, what we both come up with, oh, this was a case I found that's very similar to this. And I know you're very interested in this kind of cause. How, how do you find them though? Like, like, how do you, how do you? Okay. So what I do first is I have sort of a I don't know if you want to call it buckets. We can call it buckets, but I have 
topics that I know are things I'm passionate about. Florida, because I'm from Florida. So like Florida yeah. killings. And then I will look for them basically on Google. I don't have any magic, <laughs> magic place I'm going. I just go on Google and I start looking up like, you know, murders from 1999 or whatever, because I don't want to go past a certain year either. Like, I'm not really fond of doing anything 60s, 50s, like I'm kind of like 70s and right. forward. And I'll put in certain things. And then also, I watch a lot of true crime on TV. So if a case, like when I'm in the shower or something or anywhere, I'll just be <laughs> consuming it. So wait, I will. Wait, wait. You're watching videos in the shower? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's like one of my only free <laughs> moments. But I'll be watching stuff and I'll be like, you know what? That was really compelling. And, or, and I feel like there wasn't enough information on it. Right. And that's what I used to do when I was just a viewer. I would be like, well, who, what, who was she? What, why, why did she do that? So let's, let's talk about that. Um, so you, you, you get some content and you're like, I want more. Yeah. And that's, that kind of sends you down the rabbit hole of yeah. the research. Is that what it is? Yeah. And it's not always there. Like sometimes yeah. the research isn't there and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, and then a lot of times I'm like, wow, there's like four books I can read on this. Yeah. So I want to, I want to, uh, stop here. Cause I think this is, uh, <laughs> and, and really emphasize a point. Um, I can't tell you how many people want people to bring them ideas. Um, like as content creators, like give me a thousand ideas or give me this, whatever, you know, and, and I know that works too. It's like, if you have mm -hmm. smart people bring you ideas, you'll, you'll be able to say, oh, my audience would like this, right? Yeah. But there's a difference between discovering yourself as a creator. Like when you have the idea, um, it's like, it, you, you just, it just doesn't leave you. I, I think right. it's like, okay, I get excited about it. And I think that comes out in the content. Um, I, I remember uh, six years ago, seven years ago, seven years ago, seven, six, six or seven years ago, Mr. Beast actually shared an idea with me. He goes, this would be the most amazing video of all time. It'd break the internet, blah, blah, blah. 100 million, billion video views or whatever. And, um, and it, like when I heard it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that would literally break the internet. And I'm all talking with him the other day and, and well, him and, and talked with him a little bit, but then talking with one of his um, uh, key team members. And they finally found a way to get, do that idea. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I was going to say, like, did they do it? Like, no, it's like, like till, till oh the my end gosh. of the day, it's like one of those video ideas that you're like, if we can only do this. But right. what I'm getting at is, I think when you come up with a great idea or you discover it, um, that's where the passion comes in. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you're passionate about telling that story. And so if you don't have that, if you don't wake up in the morning and say, do you know what? Like I'm, I, I, I don't even know what video to create. Right. I think you need to go on a little bit of journey of self-discovery, um, mm -hmm. whether it's like looking for that passion or finding that passion. Cause if you get it to that element, then I think that you're only just cruising, um, like you're yep. on cruise control. You're not, yeah. you're not necessarily pushing the envelope. I definitely have standard, like I wouldn't call them standards, but I have things that I'm looking for when I want to talk about a case. And if, you know, I will go through hundreds and hundreds of documents and look through things. And if it, you know, obviously it's always sad. It's always horrible. These, these cases are terrible. And I read so many of them, but then there's something about me being authentic to like, oh my gosh, I feel so like, there's this feeling I get where it's like, I have to do this. I have to do this. And that's when I put it on my list. I'm like, that, yeah. that's, I gotta do it. And, and let's talk about, they have to do this. Is it feel like their story needs to be told, right? Yeah. Yep. That's their story needs okay, to be told, so right. Like, their story needs to be deeper. Like that's not what happened. Yep. You know, the, the, yep. the network got it wrong. The network embellished. Um, there's a lot of that too. That's like a yeah. whole other thing, but yeah. Wow. I, I love that. I, I, on so many levels, I think that, um, your passion to make sure you get it right, that you need to be able to give it justice, um, for the world. Um, you know, and you just want to make sure that that documentation is out there properly. Like someone mm -hmm. that actually looked through it through the lens, um, you know, after the fact in a way that can, can, uh, live, live on, like live that person's, I don't, I don't know how to explain this, but I think it's just like helping, helping this story be told right and not misunderstood. Yeah, because I, I have talked to survivors who said that, you know, a network took their story, hardly paid them, and then changed that they're allowed to change some of the facts. And yeah. I'm like, but that's what? Like, that's not real. Yeah. So I, I'm scared of that part. So yeah. I'm, I'm always trying to be more diligent. Wow. 
Um, there's so many veins to, to go in on this. Um, and so, so I love, I love the, the process. Now, um, when you started to go deeper into your content, um, mm -hmm. like I, I know you, you tested some longer form and then you did some shorter form. Um, when did you figure out your format? Cause I think that is a really important thing. Um, cause like, I, I know that you have videos that are a lot longer and then some that mm -hmm. are really short, like under 20 minutes. I, I know that's probably not short by, um, the world standards, but like, yeah. could you, could you talk about that real quick? Yeah. So in the beginning, I would, I never, I did not know how to create these type of videos. You just start from wherever you are. And I would just sort of read an article or read a blog. And that's why they were shorter because I wasn't really going in depth on them. And the turning point was when I did that long video, it was about, um, it was a Florida family, the Andrews family, I think it was the one that went viral, the one that like got me a lot of views and people liked how many details I gave. And, you know, I know people are going to laugh, but like, since I've been a little girl, my mom would be like, tell me the whole story. And she'd make me go back to the beginning and say like, well, what color shirt were they wearing? What were they doing? Why were they there? And so I got used to providing a bunch of details that maybe some people don't care about, but I realized that's my gift. Like that's stuff that I care about. Like I care about what color, you know, what was their favorite color? So I was like, you know what, maybe I should try going in that direction and see if there's other people who care just as much as I do about this person. And lo and behold, you know, I did more videos like that, longer form going into details. And a lot of people like those videos. So I just realized that was more of my niche, like long form content. Yeah, no. And I think you found your jam because it's like the, when, when you, um, when you found the story that, that you wanted to be able to tell the full story um, and, and you, you've been able to set it up right. And I think you got put the right framework in where mm -hmm. it does make sense, you know, to, to give it justice, it needs time. Um, and, and sometimes to get the, the importance of the case, you got to give the details and not edit those out. Um, and yeah. I think you do a really good job on that. So, um, that's a really, really cool thing that you, you, uh, you know, been able to pivot seven times. <laughs> you found, found the passion and, and love. Um, you're able to have a moment where you're like, oh, okay, now I'm making more than the corporate world. Yeah. What about now? Like, like, where are you at now with it? So um, I have two things. All right. So, um, I already, when I talked to you the first time and we were doing the, the jumpstart, I had written a goal, like I would like to speak at Vid Summit. I put it as like one of my top goals. So I'm speaking at Vid Summit, which is amazing. Like I'm scared, but I'm gonna do it because I, I wanna be, I wanna help people. And I, I, I didn't be know that was that. one of your goals. That's so yes, awesome. Yes, that was one of my goals. And another one of my goals was that I want to meet my audience one day, right? Like I, everyone wants to kind of like meet their audience one day, I think, um, because they're like my friends. And I just got an amazing opportunity. And I don't know what I should do with this whole opportunity, but. I'm going to be a featured creator at one of the coolest true crime conventions. It's um, it's all about like ethics and true crime. And there's going to be oh, a great. lot of educational um, seminars for people to learn how to research ethically. There's going to be advocates there who are survivors and I'm a featured creator and it's in August. So it's coming up in, in Austin, Texas. So I'm doing that. And so I don't know if that's something like, I don't know what you would do if you knew that you were going to do something like that, but Right now, I did announce it in a video, and hopefully, people will come out and share. You know. Yeah, um, let me um, let me give you some some tips, and I think this is all for uh, creators out there. Um, one of the the um, things that I really focus in on is the community aspect. I think community mm -hmm. is really important. Um, I like to um, you know figure out you know how many people are going to come or whatever. Mm -hmm. So at VidCon, way back in the way, VidCon 1, believe it or not, VidCon 1, wow. I did a meetup before VidCon 1, and I'm like, hey, I'll buy you breakfast. And I think we had- like, I was there. Wait, I what? Was, I was at that. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Did you do two breakfasts? Because yeah, I was at, I did two. I did two breakfasts, okay, both days. Okay, because I was at one of those breakfasts. I kid you not. I that, one of those that is so crazy. And you came that is to so the crazy. table but and I did you that. Yeah, I, I just paid him and I'm like, hey, let's just talk YouTube or <laughs> you whatever. Got, yep, you paid I didn't meal. sell you anything. I mean, no. it's not one of those things. I just wanted to meet up, you know, so and cool. so that was one of the things I did. And I just like, hey, it didn't really cost me much, you know, but it was a way that I'm like, hey, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this community, you know, yeah. so. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I went to one of those breakfasts and it was really good. 
Yeah, yeah. so I, I, you, you could, you could do something like that. I think, you know, um, you know, it just depends on how many people are going. I think right. going to like meetup.com and getting people to RSVP for something, yeah. you can kind of gauge how big of the venue you can get. I think you still have enough time for that for yeah. sure. So. so, and then, and then the other thing I'm working on is I am, I am making another YouTube channel. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's, 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 it's pop sockets. <laughs> pop sockets are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a true crime podcast, but it's going to be on video as well, so yep. people can watch it on YouTube, and yep. then they can also find it on the podcast platforms. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. So, um, so are you going to do the podcast with your friend um, that you were doing before, or are you no, doing it on your own? It's on okay. my own, and I think one day I will have guests, but for the for the first part, I'm just going to be doing it on my own. That's great. That's great. <sighs> I, I, this is probably the best comment in the history of everything. Pop socket crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody killed someone with one. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to check. I, I, that's, that's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. My next bucket. That's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. Okay. So um, let's, let's kind of switch gears. I think there's a lot of people that would have questions for you. Sure. Um, you know, I, I'd love to open it up to questions. And let's talk about Vid Summit real quick before we jump into questions. Um, and for, for those that don't know, I, um, you know, started vid summit so long ago, 10 years ago, and, um, it, it was all about seeing an opportunity of the creator economy, um, that you can actually build a team and you can become an entertainment company. And there's like a lot of opportunities to, to, uh, not only work with brands, but become your own brand. Um, and one of the, one of the, um, things that I get really excited about was there's a, a creator that came to the first vid summit. Um, and I, I, I'm going to just go ahead and add this cause this is super awesome. Uh, one of the creators that here's our website. Um, but one of the creators that came to the, uh, first, um, vid summit, um, was Mindy McKnight. Now she didn't come, her husband did, and he just quit her day, his day job, um, and was supporting her and she had a channel called cute girls hair. And then we also had Brooklyn and Bailey, Bailey, who was starting their own YouTube channel, um, come to vid summit one. Well, what I love about Mindy and she's one of our keynotes, um, she actually did everything that I believe that a creator can do, which is leverage your YouTube audience. After you grow and, and establish a YouTube audience, you can leverage your YouTube audience where she created a product called Heritage. Um, and it's all hairlines. Of course, you know, it's around, um, you know, uh, hair products and stuff like that, but they, they actually sell so much through Walmart It's crazy. And she's just kind of sharing the story of what she's able to do from there. And uh, ultimately, we're just getting ready to, to launch the schedule soon, but you definitely need to grab tickets. Uh, this is going to be a, a, one of the most amazing conferences ever. We have so many things going on uh, right now. Um, it, 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 there's so much announcements that, that's coming on that I'm really excited about. Um, but let's talk about your presentation, if we can, um, and what you plan on presenting i didn't know it was a goal for you yeah that was one of my uh, but goals yeah let's go years. ahead yeah yeah <laughs> so what i want to do is i want to give people actionable steps i don't want them to leave and be inspired by just me talking about what i did i want to put together something that they can take and you know take with them and do it right when they get back so that's like my biggest thing but we're going to be talking about pivoting and the fears yeah. of pivoting and the best ways to do it and how to overcome some of the hurdles yeah, what I what I love when I look for a speaker at Vid Summit um, is, do they have uh, something that I believe the world needs to 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 learn from? And I don't care how big of a creator they are. I think if they're right. able to to really share that case study, but girl, if there's ever a case study on pivoting, you've pivoted <laughs> seven times. It's like you're the queen of pivoting. Yeah. Until you found it, but it's like it's like the the best um, the best topic because I think a lot of people. Um, they feel stuck of where they're at. They don't know or are not willing to take that that risk um, to to do that. Um, and and you're going to show them, hey, this is mm -hmm. what I did, and here's how many times I did it until mm -hmm. I found the right vein. And then you know, showing how you're able to uh, really uh, follow your passion, um, build your audience, build your friends, and and really you know build the revenue um and the and the business engine around it as well which i'm really excited about so me too 
Yeah. Well, um, so what, let's, let's, you've been to Vid Summit quite a few times. So like, mm -hmm. what, what's your favorite thing about Vid Summit? And then we're going to, oh uh, if you have questions, guys, put it in the comments and we'll, we'll bring you up on, uh, you know, we'll ask questions for all of us, but go ahead. What's your, what's one of your favorite? So I have two favorite things. I have a bunch of favorite things, but one of the things I absolutely love is just hearing inspirational stories about other people. I remember Peter McKinnon spoke one time and I was like bawling with his whole entire story. And then I remember, um, I can't remember the guy's bucket list family, bucket list family. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. he, I yeah. was bawling Garrett, hearing Garrett, that. I yeah. had to like run and redo my makeup. <laughs> I was like, oh no. So I get very inspired just hearing somebody's life story and what they did and how they got to be where they are. And then the second thing I love is I get to meet like-minded people who are also doing this, want to do this. And that's amazing because it's lonely creating content. This is where I create it. There's nobody here. <laughs> so I love the community aspect of it. Yeah, I love it. Love it. Um, for me, I, I love the culture. Um, I was very specific of the type of culture that we wanted there. And and I love it. It's where creators are helping other creators. Uh, it's definitely my favorite thing um, about it is, is like you never know what you're going to get. Right. Um, it's like my, my thing is I always say, you know, people don't hold back. It's like one of my favorite presentations of all time was uh, Hope Scope. Oh, who, my gosh. I love her. I was just yeah, touching she's her. She's so amazing. She's like <laughs> her and Tyler are just some of the most yes. amazing people ever. But she did like an avatar training, like of understanding your view or avatar. And I was yeah. like, holy cow, it's so good. And I don't know if everyone, I know that she got a standing ovation, but I don't know what if they knew what they got. Right. Because there's so many people don't know who they're making videos for. And and ultimately, you know, that's that that was one of the best presentations of all time when it comes to avatar training, of really understanding who you're talking to and and making content for them and i just i just love it and then two one of the most inspirational ones for me was having wenji uh come on um, oh, wow. wenji was able to share um how she made uh, hundreds of millions of dollars um you know through her youtube channel like like literally uh taking her fame and understanding and then leveraging it into a unique opportunity and so uh, i'd encourage you guys all there's a link in the description below you can do that but uh, definitely come to VidSummit. And then two, uh, on this live stream, we're going to give away some uh, VidSummit tickets. Uh, that's right. You heard me. Well, over $1,000 cool. worth. Uh, we're going to give tickets to VidSummit uh, just because that's what we do on these live streams. Okay. So let's uh, go and get a good question here. This is coming from Jackie. How do you approach the research phase? Is there any documented template you use? That's a great question. So I use Dynalist. It's not a document template or anything of, for my research, but there's this uh, app or uh, system on your computer and it's called Dynalist. And what you can do is you can hashtag things. So it, like, let's say something goes to a 911 call or a date on the, on, on the case, I'll put it in a hashtag and then I can click on the hashtag and I can see all of the things that happened with that specific topic. So I am very, very organized when it comes to how I'm researching it because I cannot put a story together if I have all the facts all over the place. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I think, um, you know, research is by far, I think, three quarters of your work. I think you need Good. to really understand the pre-production side. I think a lot of content creators are more reactive. Mm -hmm. And if they had put more energy in the, in the uh, pre-production side, you'd actually have a lot more success because you're thinking about it uh, very specifically. You asked me how long, and I would say, like, for my research, it's, it's hours. It can be like 50 or 60 hours. And then, which is nuts, which and is then, nuts, but yeah. It is. And then, and then the writing part takes me a long time, but then the filming part only takes me like three hours. So it's, yeah. you know. Okay, so this is coming from Mark Reyes. Um, hey, Daryl and Kimberly. Me and my wife have a food uh, blog called Recipes by Nora. And we have a website. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, Pinterest, and YouTube. How can we grow our channel more? Okay, there you go. There, there's the, there's the, your question, Kimberly. It's all you. <laughs> Man, I would need to look at it first of all, but off of, off of the bat, um, depending on how long you've been doing it, you know, I mean, if this is something you've been doing for like five years, maybe there's a small pivot you can take before you try to do something totally different. Maybe like Daryl and I were talking about, I'm doing a certain type of true crime. Maybe there's like a certain type 
of food that you're going to talk about. And maybe you can narrow it down a little bit and that will appear, appeal to a more specific audience. But other, I can't tell you without seeing it in depth. Yeah, I would say listen to what uh, we said here on Kimberlea's journey. Um, she did the, the, she started uploading videos and started to pay attention to her audience. She did the 30 day creator challenge. Like that was a very pivotal moment uh, for her. Um, it's free. You can find it in the, the description below. I, I would do that. I also 100%. read your book. Yeah, well, yeah, that, I that too. Book. I was gonna, uh, um, I'll tell you what we're gonna do for, for Mark. Um, I was gonna give away a book and oh. all I could find was the French version <laughs> I got the French version. <laughs> nice. And I got the Portuguese version. I was gonna like pull this up, and I'm like, I got the Portuguese version here. But um, so so sorry, Mark. But uh, go ahead, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, give me your your name and an address, and I'll send you the YouTube formula book. Nice. So you get it for free. There we go. See, you win something when you come on. All right, let's let's go to, uh, to this next one. I would dare to drop the word knitting from my channel, but I almost entirely do crochet now. Okay. Um, ah. The question would be is like, if, if you're looking to rebrand re or, you know, do something, what, what would you, would you change your name on this or what would you do? Yeah, I would change my name. Um, the reason I didn't change anything and I use the same channel was because I didn't want to, I want, I didn't want to be like a faceless channel because there's a lot of them out there. And so I just kept mine. But if I were to have not, have, you know, if I were doing this in her case, let's say I probably would change it to something more specific. So that way, you know, people would know exactly what they're getting and not coming and going, Oh, wait a minute. I thought you were doing knitting and now I only see crochet on here. Yeah, no, agreed. I, I think the more uh, specific that you can get on, hey, this this is a crochet channel, um, the better it is. I like to simply understand and simply share. The only time that I would say that I wouldn't change it is it has to do with your own personal brand. And I, right. I actually had to make a decision. Do I create you know something that has its own brand that I can bring in other people? Or do I just establish my own brand and I chose to do my own brand? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that. It was just a hard yeah. decision in the beginning. All right. Um, here's another question from Jerry. Uh, how common is a bin session on your channel with cons uh, consistently long videos? It's very common. I mean, I think I think my what is my average view per viewer? Like they probably watch like four or five other videos when they go. So yeah, I mean, they probably can watch more than that, but the average person, I think they probably watch about four or five other ones. So this is a, Jerry, this is a metric that I, I try to teach my students and, and Kimberly is a student of mine to care about because this is your loyalty flat factor. You know, if they come in and start binge watching your content, if you upload multiple uh, videos a month, you want to make sure that you get that as highest number as possible as the average view per viewer. Because if you can get people to watch seven or eight videos when they discover you, that's great. Because YouTube says, oh, you know, it's actually finding the right video for the person. And then two, um, it, they have a tendency to watch more content, which makes YouTube more money and then also the creator more money. And so, of course, YouTube's going to put it out to the right audience. But I love that. Love that. Okay. Um, here is a next one. Death monkey, <laughs> extra large. Okay, there, there we go. I, I, this is probably the most appropriate, you know, avatar name for you. I love multiple topics. How do you pick one to pivot to or do you just create multiple channels? I have tried uh, doing a bunch of stuff on my one channel before. Trust me, I was a variety channel for a long time. And honestly, I can say I, I don't think it works. Um, unfortunately, you're like it's segmenting your audience. And I think it's better if you have three or four interests, why not? Because you never know which one of those channels will take off. But the only downside to that is I believe in focusing on one of them before you create another one. Like when you're really, really good at what you're doing, you have time to have a hobby and that hobby can be your other channel that you love. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Listen to her. She's, she knows what she's talking about there. She's pivoted more than any person on the history of YouTube. So there we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, how not to over research for a video? Like, I, I think let's talk about that one first because there's it's a two part question. Like, if you go down the rabbit hole, like, how do you know when you need to stop doing the research and just create the content? 
So I wish I could remember my professor's name right now, but it's, 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 I can't remember. But when I was in my first year of law school, I had to take a required class. I mean, all of them are required, but this one was advanced legal writing and research. And in order to graduate, you have to write this big project and you have to learn how to research correctly. And there's a way to research correctly. So she would always tell us about the circle of research. So when you're starting something, if you start to see the same thing, coming up again and again and again, you've kind of gone to the point where there's no, re like, there's no return after that. It's like, you'll know, you'll know because you're like, oh yeah, I already read that. It's like the same thing coming up. You're not getting those little tidbits. But for me, I like newspapers. I like old newspapers. So I subscribe to a bunch of different newspapers and go to like the archive and look at what was happening when that crime occurred. Not what a show said was happening, but what, what was the neighborhood talking about June 15th, 1979? You're like, what was wow. going on there? And that's where I get a lot of my real quotes and like what was going on and the, the temperature of the environment and how people really felt. And I feel like that that's a, a must. So, so th this, this is a really good question because um, I've never heard this, the circle of, of research, um, which is brilliant. I, I definitely want to dive into that um, specifically because uh, I think a, a lot of creators, they, they either overanalyze and mm -hmm. they, they're more you know, paralyzed and can't move forward because they think they need to go deeper or whatever. So you, right. you, you set a moment of that. And I, and I love that. Um, but the process that you went through it too, cause like, I'm kind of shocked cause I thought, Oh, I would just go back and rewatch everybody and see what they're missing or, you know, try to get at least a framework, but you, you actually go do archiving. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> if I see somebody else did the video, I try not to, I will watch it afterwards sometimes just to be like, Hey, that was great or whatever, just to support other creators. But um, what I do think is important is I have like an outline of on Dynalist on my flow. It's called Story Flow. I just made up. It's yeah, just yeah. called Story Flow. And I, I make sure that I'm always hitting my Story Flow. So if I'm missing some research for that, like that thing, like I don't know if it could be like the autopsy, I, I need to find that. So that's how I kind of have my my points. Yep. So let's do this next one. Uh, I know this is a question more about the AI. Have you ever used ChatGBT or Bard Me? or something like that? Yeah. Like, yeah, because you... we, we were just at the mastery thing. So I downloaded well, I, all the I games. know that. <laughs> <laughs> like I do, te we do teach a lot of advanced stuff to um, my students. But... I have to tell you something. Okay. So my last title, like the, the last video that just went up, ChatGPT created <laughs> that title, but I obviously have to input the right, you know, the right, right thing. Right, right, And it gave me like three or four and I was like, oh, wow, these two go together so well. So I, I took two of the titles and put them together and it did really well. So, I mean, yes, yeah. I, I do think it can work. So um, I just want to make it clear. I think if you're using AI just to do uh, title ideas, and this is not to rip on you because you, oh, you no. went through the whole I, session. It yeah. was like a whole day session <laughs> about AI. Um, but it, it, that's like that's like uh, preschool. Right. <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, no, I'm just saying I say this for our yeah. lost. But anyways, that's preschool when you're able to do it. What I what I like to do is really, really dig deep into the audience. Mm -hmm. And that's what I that's what I shared with my mastery students, um, you know, at, at our last retreat. It was like last month or whatever. Yeah, um, it was too but, complicated for me, but I loved it. I loved it. I saw everything and I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, I definitely have been using AI for a very, very long time for a lot of different things. But I think the thing that's the most interesting is really understanding the audience and creating an audience avatar and then and then um, using it as a way to find what they would be interested in. And so my question to you, Kimberly, this is really important, but have you ever used it in um, doing some of your research, like inputting, hey, I got this case, is there something I'm missing? Is there any other, you know, documentation or like, have you gone through it to that level? So in the beginning, ChatGPT would not let you talk about anything murder related. Now it puts a little disclaimer and it's like, hey, don't forget to be very compassionate. It like gives you a little message, which I think is really good. But um, I don't use it for that. However, what was I going to say I used it for the other day? Oh, I was like, how can I find legal documents on this? And Ooh, it gave like me, that. yeah, it gave me all these things. And I end up reaching out to different websites, to different companies to try to get access to certain platforms that can help me research. Yeah, I love it. All right, this next question is coming from Brenda Blanco, all the way from uh, Mexico. Okay, question. When is it okay to rebrand the same channel into a drastically different niche? 
is this ever a good idea? How would the algorithm treat this channel? Yeah, it's a good idea if you decide that you're not going to go back to that old content, because what I have seen is kind of like when you have a relationship and you want to break up with a person, but you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to find somebody else. So you kind of like, <laughs> don't make the leap. You can't really dip your toe back in. You have to say, okay, I'm rebranding this channel. I'm never going to do that other content again, unless I do it on another channel, because you're, you're going to mess up. <laughs> it's going to mess up again. You have to be so focused. And I think it is, it's 100% possible because I've done it. And I've, I've, I've seen other people change their whole channel around, but the only thing you have to remember is you're probably going to get a new audience. So that yeah. old audience will probably drop away. Yeah. Um, and then to Brenda, it's hard um, to break out of a geo specific country. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're getting a lot of views in specific countries on your other content, it's, it, it is hard, uh, but, but you can do it. I, I would look at, if you're going to rebrand a new channel, the, the question would be, um, how long would it take? Uh, and, and would it be just better just to continue what I'm doing on the current channel and maybe doing a different channel, um, on the new content? If you have the bandwidth, I would say that would be an option, uh, that, that I would do. The only, the only thing would be is there needs to hit a, a point in time where you have to be like Kimberly. She says, look, I, <laughs> I'm not succeeding over here. Why put all the energy here and mm -hmm. let's just go all in on this other stuff. And I think that's what you need to do as well. So all righty. Okay. So let's, I, I think it's time to give away uh, a vid summit ticket. How's that sound? Sounds good. You sound good. Okay. I'm excited see. to see who wins. Wait, wait are we going to know who wins right away or do they have well, to wait? Yeah. No, well, okay. no. Why, why would we do that? <laughs> no. All right. So, we'll tell you in a week. Um, Here's here's a, here's a good question coming up um, from one of my partners in the chosen Dallas Jenkins. Got to bring up this one. This is a, a Facebook question. How much how much time do you spend watching other similar creators to learn from them, opposed to just focusing on your own thing? Okay, so I know everybody's different. I don't have a lot of time, so if I'm watching other creators. I can decide not to do a case because I'll be like, well, they already did it and I don't really know. And then I'll get a, so I try to watch things that are going to inspire me as a person and not so much watch other creators. I do recon and research, which is a little bit different, but I don't, I don't really just consume a whole bunch of other creators and go, okay, what should I do differently? I just know what I want to do. Like I just try to focus on what I know I want to do. And I, yeah, I just watch things that make me happy. I watch a lot yeah. of court trials. Yeah. I, what I love about content, content consumption is there's the student hat that I put on and I can watch mm -hmm. any uh, vertical of video and like, why did they do this? Or how are they engaging this? Or how are they pulling people through the story? Um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, uh, that I just discovered, um, and he's actually coming to speak at vid summits. It, let me, let me pull it up. Cause it's like, like this, this guy is so good. Um, um, and Dallas, you definitely like this channel. I can tell you that this guy is like so super good. Um, but anyways, he's, he's coming to vid summit, um, is, is Dodford. And I, like, I just binge watched all this stuff. It was like wow. really, really good, but he, he takes the entertainment, uh, Hollywood entertainment world and deep dives into just the history of, um, and it's just some of the best content I've ever seen on YouTube. And he's so good, really excited about this channel. Um, what, what I love about this specific type of content, um, is I like, um, the storytelling, um, and how he's bringing in details I didn't know. And what I found is like, he'll take someone super popular and just do a really, really deep dive on something you didn't know about them and kind of build upon that frame. Uh, but I, I'll tell you the one on Adam Sandler was just unbelievable. It kind of pulled me into it. And then, um, you know, his, he's just he's just probably one of the best storytellers through the edit I've ever seen. Um, I'll, that's why he's coming to speak at Vid Summit. And I think so. that's a good idea of just to answer their question as well. If there's somebody that I really look up to, it might not even be in my niche. It's usually not in my niche. It's usually somebody that I'm like, wow, that's such a compelling story. And then like, I love James Johnny. He's not yeah. in true crime niche, but I watch a lot of his videos because they're just very good storytelling. Yeah. And I think, I think that's where I like to put my hat on. Am I, am I going to learn and what can I learn from these people? 
am I going to just sit back and be entertained? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I love. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and give away a ticket, okay, to Vid Summit. Now, here's the only caveat. If you already bought your ticket, you get this as an additional ticket. We're not doing any refunds on these giveaways, just to let you know on that. <laughs> and so um, what we're gonna do is, um, and I'm gonna be transparent as possible, okay? Um, and, uh, one of the, one of the, the most difficult things for vid summit has always been, it's felt like a bro fest. Okay. Bro fest. <laughs> like it's a bro fest. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm telling you, it's a bro fest sometimes. <laughs> oh. And, and I vowed, um, I've always tried to get some amazing, powerful, uh, female creators to come and share. And I, it felt like the prom, I was getting rejected left and right all the time. And like, I, I can't tell you, I've been literally trying to get I Justine literally for nine years. What? Uh, nine out of the 10 years, I always get shot down and I, I'm never giving up. I will get I Justine. Just shy. Like I literally have tried every aspect. I like tried it every, every, you ask every her if way. You can be anyway. a hologram on the thing and not be there. <laughs> Something like that. So um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, do a couple things. Uh, so I brought up this concern and I bring up Hope Scope uh, uh, with this because I literally went to her and I says, how do I not become a bro fest? Um, and she goes, well, duh, like get more women there. I'm like, okay, we're going to figure this out. And, um, and so I, I vowed that the stage, when this, when we have three sessions going at once, one of the stages is always going to have a female on there. I don't care what it is. I'm going to literally do it. I'm going to look in every aspect of it. Um, I've literally been trying to get the best creators on the planet there. And, and so we're, we're definitely going to do that. And then two, hope has been doing a great job at introducing me to some people. Um, like we actually got, like we tried to get Michelle Carr last year and hope was able to land the deal for us to get Michelle Carr this year. She's one of our keynotes. I'm like, okay, that's great. You know? Um, and so my, my whole goal is to elevate the, uh, attendees of, of the females. So they feel like they have a space for them as well. Um, and then there's some other things we're going to be announcing. That's going to be pretty dope. And then two, uh, one thing I love about Hope more than than ever is like she's literally buying tickets and airfare and and lodging for females to go. Wow. It's like I love it. I love stuff like that. So okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, I don't want YouTube to be a bro fest. Um, it's not not my intentions at all to do that. So for us to to go down that vein, uh, we need to get more females at Vid Summit. So if the ticket price is one of those things that's keeping you coming from Vid Summit. now's the time to, 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 to share that uh, because what we're going to do is give away that right now. So guess who gets it? <laughs> <laughs> See how easy that was? Oh I, I was just like, okay, here's, here we go. Okay, so uh, what you need to do, uh, Amelie, is reach out to me on Twitter, DM me, show this, I will get you a ticket, okay? Um, and she from you, Florida because she has 305 in her. I, I don't um, know. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, we need more chicas. Claro que sí. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else we got? You got to do the same thing, Elizabeth. You just got to DM me on Twitter. We'll, we'll get you there. Okay. Um, let's see. Who else do we got going on here? Um, do, do. We got to thank you. Okay. We got you, got you tickets. Uh, um, okay. Here, how about this one? Uh, and West, I'm too new, I have no dough. Well, guess what? You can come for free. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's three tickets. Um, okay, we're, we're doing pretty good. How many, how many should we do, 10? I don't know. You're supposed that's to say lot. yes, Daryl, do that's 10. That's a lot, yes, do 10. Okay, okay sounds good. Uh, how about this one? Uh, tested, uh, tried, tested, and true. Okay, you're coming to Vid Summit, there we go. Uh, who else we got? Um, yes, 10. Here we go. Yes, uh, all 10. you guys that you're coming on, you're getting a free ticket to Vid Summit. All you got to do is DM me this time code. Ready? Okay. Um, hope. No, you don't get one. <laughs> <laughs> you can pay for it for yourself. Okay. Um, here we go. Um, oh, we already got Elizabeth. Here we go. Come on. Where are we at? Um, here we go. There we go. Uh, uh, Kate. Uh, how do you, Nobu, you are coming to Vid Summit. All you got to do is DM me on Twitter. We'll go from there. Does that sound good? Um, how many are we at? Kimberly, you're, you're supposed to keep count. I thought that was four, but there could have been five. 
We've got Elizabeth. How many did we have, guys? Uh, I think we got, I think five or six, probably. Okay. Um, okay. Hope Scope. Uh, if you're going to give a ticket away, okay, I'll give you a ticket to give away. There we go. Okay, that's six or five or four. Okay, let's pretend it's five. I think it's six, but yeah. Let's pretend okay. it's five. Okay. All right. Um, this was a good one because like um, recipes by Nora, because that was a question earlier. Mm -hmm. um, let's get you a ticket to Vid Summit. Um, all you got to do is go and tweet at me. Um, make sure you DM me. That's a really important thing. So, okay. Um, here we go. Another one. Okay. Chica here. There we go. Esther, um, you are coming. Is that seven or eight? That's seven. I'm, I'm getting confused. Now. You, you remind now. me. Yep. I'm on, we're at seven. All right. Here we go. Um, my wife's birthday is October, so give Aww. her a ticket. Okay. Sounds good. Sweet. We, we are set. Your wife will have a ticket. Um, we, we definitely want to have uh, her at Bid Summit and you as well. Okay. Um, okay. One more girl power. Girl power. Jackie, there you are. Is that nine or 10? It's nine. You okay. got one more. Why, do I, why am I always one, one ahead <laughs> here? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, um, here we go. Um, okay. Nice. Cool dog walker. There you go. Here you, you're coming. You're coming. You're coming. You're coming. Um, all you got to do is reach out to me on Twitter, uh, and we go from there. Now, uh, I want to. I just want to let you guys know. Um, I'm going to give away some tickets to some L's. I don't want to just like. I know it's going to be a bro fest, you know. But we're going to give a ticket away. Um, and here we go. Uh, your brother's friend gets a ticket. Air lost. There you go. All you got to do is send me that info at uh, Twitter, and we'll get that things going. And um, I want to. I want to just kind of uh, go through Vid Summit, why I started it, and so on. Um, let me pull up. Oh, I got it. See if we can uh, pull this up real quick. But uh, over the years, we well, over the last nine years, we actually been in um, LA, mm -hmm. and this is the first year we decided to go out of LA and go right into Dallas. So we are in Dallas. Um, did it for a couple reasons. Um, the the main reason was we needed a bigger location that um, that we could house more people. Like we, we hit the limits in the hotels. We, we can't go any bigger in those hotels. Um, and so we basically are doing it in Dallas uh, area. And let me, let me go down to the size of this uh, building. This is just like massive. Look at this thing. Wow. So we had the whole thing. It's all four floors. We have it. Um, really, really excited. It's going to be nice and, and big. But the main reason why we did it in in Dallas um, specifically was we wanted a place that was like centrally located both East Coast and West Coast. Like we've really taken care of West Coast, but our East Coast peeps and our Central peeps um, just always get hosed. And then two, um, I've been spending a lot of time in Dallas uh, with, with the TV show called The Chosen. And, um, and basically we have our first chosen <laughs> event called chosen con the following week. I'm like, okay, let's do a one, two punch. And, uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, we do have some amazing speakers coming. You definitely want to check it out. Uh, we got Michelle Carr. We got Zach King. We got this, uh, fat boy, fat, fat guy McGee right here. Uh, we got Jenny. <laughs> Jenny was on stage. And, um, like her, I think she'll be close to like either 3 million subscribers, uh, since October, uh, when she hits it, she's just really crushing it. we got Mindy McKnight. we got Preston plays. we got a ton of speakers. We're getting ready to announce some really, really big speakers as well. And we're actually launching, uh, the full schedule that's coming up. Uh, but yeah, that that's coming up, uh, very specifically, I would say, uh, for me, um, I wanted to put uh, industry experts there in front of you. And one of my favorite ones, um, believe it or not, is uh, Preston with Preston Plays. Um, he was so excited to be one of the keynotes. He's actually kicking off Vid Summit. He's explaining how he scaled from just two employees to uh, what he has now. And he has a ton, a ton of... Uh, uh, of knowledge when it comes to scaling. He's sharing his processes, systems. He spent 18 months really refining uh, what he's doing currently now um, and putting out some amazing content. And him and his, wi his wife, 
um, um, just are really impacting uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, there's so much you can learn from him. And what I love about uh, Preston was I invited him to keynote a couple years ago. And he, when when people open it up to Q and A, guess where he was at? He was like literally, like he was like literally in front of them asking questions uh, because he wanted to get the most out out of it. In fact, um, let me pull it up because it's actually on the website. Let me let me go right here real quick. I mean, here he is keynoting and then he's asking questions um and and i love it i love that's what vid summit is and and ultimately where uh like the, the keynotes will want to go into the audience because there's so much value um and um you've been like how many years like is it four or five years that you've been yeah because it's always been in la but now it's over here and, and it's in dallas which will be cool yeah. i was just gonna say i need to watch that press and plays uh, keynote because I want to build a team. Like I want people to help me. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to do any of that. So I'll be in there I'll be watching. Well, you, you gotta be there. Number one, it's the first, the first presentation. Well, I mean, I guess we do a welcome with Mr. Beast and such, but yeah, I'm really, really excited to have him kick it off because, uh, this is, uh, a, a big team, um, mm -hmm. uh, effort. Like if you're really serious about it and you're starting to scale up, um, it's like, how do you scale more and how do you make the right decisions? And he actually made right. some pretty bad decisions that he's going to share with that led to him creating his system, which he's sharing just on, cool. on, on, um, you know, on stage, which I love. Cause like normally he wouldn't do that. I guess he would do it in a podcast, but this is a, you know, a great, great place. So, okay. Um, here's, here's the thing. Um, um, my, my goal for vid summit is to help you guys be successful. And, um, one of the things that I found is you never know who you're going to be sitting by. Uh, believe it or not, um, seven years ago, six years ago or whatever, uh, Mr. Beast came sitting in the audience. He wasn't even a speaker. Nobody knew who he was, you know, and it, I guess he had like four or five million subscribers or whatever. And I mean, and, and then he's been able to not only uh, buy in to Vid Summit as a, as a partner, uh, but he's contributed so much and really, really excited about his session, believe it or not. Um, I haven't announced this yet, but he and Eric are going to roast channels oh, nice. and give them a consultation on stage. And the only way you can do that is if you have a ticket to Vid Summit. And I'm telling you, we're going to select it. And having, you know, the biggest YouTuber on the planet uh, sitting down with one of the most disruptive YouTubers on the planet, uh, Eric, and having them digest uh, your content and giving you feedback like, why wouldn't you want yeah. to do that? Like, that's, that's so amazing. And so, um, like you never know who you're going to sit by. And so really, really excited about Vid Summit this year. It's our 10th year, got some pretty big announcements that are happening. If you've ever been to Vid Summit, it's, um, it's different. It's, it's like, I love VidCon for what it is. It's a creator fan experience. Vid Summit is about creators helping other creators. It's about Kimberley going through 14 years of YouTube and, and, and literally like she's changed her channel more times than she's changed her clothes <laughs> and she's going to share with you, you know? Yeah. And, it's so much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a question about, uh, digital tickets. Uh, we've done digital tickets in the place. There's always going to be replays. Um, right now, the only way you can get it is to get your ticket. You can buy some replays after the fact. Um, I won't say that we're going to stream or not going to stream. We'll see when we get there. Um, but we're we're looking pretty good on um, like some providers that is able to. Our internet in the building is like unbelievable. I, Texas, everything's bigger in Texas. I, I just I just want everyone to know. Even the internet. <laughs> Even the internet. Like like I went there and I'm like I'm downloading a video file and it happened in like in two minutes. I'm like wow. okay that's pretty good. And then I go into the building that we're going at and I did it in like ten seconds. The same file that I did in two minutes did in ten seconds. I'm like okay this is gonna be great. So I'm really excited about that. So. Okay, so the question would be, um, how do we request the world? I'm going to be there. You like all you got to do is buy your ticket. We'll be sending out emails uh, that you can apply for that roast, but it's going to be really, really good. I'm really, really excited. Okay, um, am I going to be doing giveaways in the future? Yes, I will be coming on a lot more frequent uh, as a live streaming. Like Saturdays is my, usually my day off, and so I'm going to. 
even on my day off, come on a live stream for about an hour or two and uh, we'll be doing giveaways for sure. So, okay. All right, um, let's go with one last thing. I wanna um, show a little video if we can. Um, let me see if we can pull this up. Let me go to a video file here. And, um, oh, there we go. Coordinating my shoes. Guess we got to unmute. Yeah, I was like, I think your mic is muted. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm all talking here, nobody can hear. There's a couple things that was really iconic about Vid Summit Nine. I really love. One was having Colin and Samir on stage, presenting how they got to a million subscribers, and then they hit a million subscriber, their million subscriber on stage. It was like you couldn't ask for better timing, right? And I just, I just love it. I, I do it. I, I love it so much. Um, and I love the community of the volunteers and the people that really put it on uh, to make it possible. And so um, this is going to be the biggest uh, vid summit of all time. And uh, we have some really big plans. Definitely would love to see you there. You're able to, to get information in the link below in the description. Definitely would love to see you there. And then two, uh, be on the lookout. Um, for some bigger announcements, we've got the schedule coming up. I know a lot of you are waiting to buy your ticket, but I wanna just share one thing with you just so that you have context um, of how popular VidSummit has become. Um, generally, we've never, we've, we, we've sold out, I think three years on tickets, um, but one thing that um, we've always never done is sold out the hotels. Um, but this year, guess what? We already sold out one of the hotels. Yeah. Like this one was, it's already gone. It's like literally gone. 
And um, trust me when I say this, uh, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to get your ticket earlier. Um, the volume of sales are actually higher um, at this time. It's like, this is what we usually have in September and it's just June and we will sell out a lot earlier. And so don't wait to the last moment literally get it get it going i know i said the venue is bigger but we were keeping it more intimate on purpose uh because that's kind of a vid summit thing and so i definitely get your tickets now um and and really figure out your travel uh it's really really great so um one last thing let's give away one more ticket one more ticket okay okay uh there we go my son's mother, homeless, disabled senior, needs a hand up to go to Vid Summit. I can drive there. I can sleep in my van, but a ticket would help. Well, awesome. guess what? Send me a ticket. Um, uh, send me a ticket. Send me your information, and I can send you a ticket on Twitter. There we go. And uh, we'll we'll do it. And you can come. There's places that you can park your van, and you know I don't know if you do van life or what you're what you're doing there, but uh, you definitely have a ticket to come to Vid Summit. Okay. All right. Any any last uh, things from you, girl? No, I loved this. This was so much fun. I'm so excited for Vid Summit. I'm you know excited to speak and help people and want to see people pivoting. I want to hear people's stories. So yeah, I'm just excited. And you never know what you're going to do. I mean, we had oh, an yeah. Uno tournament, oh. and we gave away twenty thousand dollars to the person that won. That's the lady that won. Wow. Oh my gosh. Twenty thousand dollars. Do you think it was worth it to come to Vid Summit? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, love it. Guys, thank you so much. Kimberly, thank you so much thank you. Uh, for jumping on. And I just want to just end on this. Um, I really want to jump on these live streams and help you really be successful on YouTube. I don't get to do it as much as I like. Um, I just have other things I'm doing uh, with the TV show called The Chosen. And so I'm only able to come on on the Saturdays and, and really just kind of interview uh, people that are crushing it in on YouTube and figure things out. I know how hard it can be. Uh, that's why I do these videos. It's not for the money. It's not for the fame or anything like that. It's just like I really, truly want to help you become successful on YouTube. And you can do it by having people like Kimberlea um, that has just figured out her jam, figured out her passion, and is ready to help uh, the world. So Kimberly, once again, thank you. So welcome. And thank you all. We'll see Bye, you on the next everyone. one. Bye see now. Later.